Do you have mold problems? If so, call Avogadro at 602-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-000-
well, one, because one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the third. All right, good. So all we have to do now is multiply to get our final answer, because again, moles cancel out, and we're left with the unit molecules. All right, so um, we, I see we have three sig figs here, so my final answer should be in three sig figs, right? Good, yeah, use the original number given in the problem for our sig figs at the end. And uh, looks like my calculator gives it to me in scientific notation, mm -hmm. so I'll keep it that way. Three sig figs is 9.03, and then it's times 10 to the 23rd. Good, we don't want to leave out our scientific notation. Again, let's end with a unit and a chemical label. Well, moles of H2O cancels out, and I'm left with molecules of H2O. Very good. Okay, we're gonna do another example. We're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Are you ready, Fu? I am. Okay, it says, how many moles are contained in 1.36 times 10 to the 24 molecules of carbon dioxide? I actually wanna take a quick aside here to show you that you don't have to memorize the conversion factor that we're using. If you go to table T, the back page of your reference tables, and look under mole equalities, there. You'll see that it's given to you. It says that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, good. Don't have to memorize. Let's get back to the problem. As before, let's note what we are given and what we are trying to find. We are given 1.36 times 10 to the 24th, 24th molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay, and what are we trying to find? It says how many moles? All right. We're going to write down the number given first with a unit and chemical label. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor. Okay. And we wanna get our units to cancel out in the denominator. So what unit are we going to cancel out? Well, we're trying to get rid of molecules of CO2, right? Good. And the unit that we're trying to convert to will always go in the numerator. Moles? CO2. Good. Now, let's fill in the appropriate numbers. All right. So moles always gets the one here in these with molecules, and one mole is 6.02. Good. There. Times 10 to the 23rd. to one another. All right. Now, we're going to multiply by one and then divide. Just okay. be careful with it being in scientific notation. Um, you may need to use parentheses when you divide, or if you're using the E or EE button, you should be good. Okay, so molecules will cancel out. My unit will be CO2. So plugging this all into my calculator, I end up getting 2.26. Now, I rounded that to three sig figs because of the 1.36 Good, here. original numbers. Okay, and the unit was the moles. Good. Moles CO2. Now we can see that that's a reasonable number because we didn't get some crazy exponent. Since we converted to moles, we shouldn't have a huge number like we would if we had atoms or molecules. Okay. You try number one. Convert 3.25 moles of diatomic chlorine to molecules. Make sure you show your work using dimensional analysis and sig figs. All right, well, let's do another example here. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? I mean, we're talking about practice. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. Good. It says, how many chlorine atoms are present in 2.34 moles of phosphorus pentachloride? Okay, so let's start by figuring out what's given to us and what we're trying to find. All right, so we've got 2.34 moles of phosphorus pentachloride given, and it says how many chlorine atoms. Hmm. Okay, so let's start with right there, given down. Okay, so I've got 2.34 mole of, oh, I guess I have to write a formula. Yeah. Phosphor, well, it's easy, phosphorus pentachloride, that's just molecular, so PCL5. Perfect. All right, so let's set up our first conversion factor here. Hmm, so, I don't know, I gotta go from moles, I wanna get to atoms. So let's but... cancel out our units first, so let's okay. always focus on that first. All right, so I know I want moles in the Denominator, moles of PCL5. Okay. Can I convert moles to chlorine atoms? Well, is PCL5 an atom? 
No, it's a molecule. All right, so we can't actually convert right into atoms. Oh, uh, okay, so it's gonna be extra steps then. There is gonna be one more step. So let's actually convert this into molecules first because PCL5 is a molecule. I'm gonna abbreviate molecule, um, M-O-L-E-C, PCL5. Okay. okay, so let's put our numbers in here for what this conversion factor would okay. be. So it's looking like Avogadro's on top, that's the number of molecules, so. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and one goes with the mole. Good, so sometimes it's a good idea to see that your moles cancel out here, so you know what unit you're working with for this next conversion factor. So now we're in molecules, we, we are. can't be done. Nope, the question's asking for atoms. So let's go one more dimensional analysis here, and if we <sighs> wanna cancel out molecules, what are we gonna put on our okay. denominator? So molecules of PCL5 will go on the bottom, but Okay, I guess I gotta go to atoms of chlorine? We do. So okay. let's think about this for a second. We've got molecules. We wanna get to atoms that are in that molecule, right? So it's not like a normal conversion factor, like Avogadro's number, which is like a set number? No, it's, it's kind of more straightforward, right? Because for every molecule of PCL5, how many atoms of chlorine does it contain? Oh, so in just this formula, I see that there's five atoms of chlorine. So five atoms of chlorine are in just one molecule of PCL5? That's right. Oh, okay, so the one goes with the molecules on that one. Good, so we have a little more math to do here. We're gonna multiply any numbers that are on the top and we're gonna divide by what's on bottom, which is pretty easy yeah, considering they're all ones. Good, all right, so I multiply everything through. And what I get at the very end is, off my calculator, again, it looks like three sig figs, 7.04 times 10 to the 24 atoms of chlorine. Pretty big number, but they're atoms, right? So that makes sense? Yep, looks good. Yet another example again. What are we talking about? Practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? We're talking about practice, man. We're, ta we're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We ain't talking about the game. We're talking about practice, man. Shu, are you ready? I'm still ready. All right. How many moles of barium chloride are present if there are 2.34 times 10 to the 23rd chloride ions? All right, let's start by looking at what we're given and what we're being asked to find. All right, so I've got 2.34 times 10 to the 23rd chloride ions given to me. Good. And I'm trying to find the number of moles of barium chloride. Good, so remember in these conversion questions, we're always gonna start with our given with units and labels. Okay, so I start with 2.34 times 10 to the 23rd. It's kind of weird, they didn't say chlorine atoms, chloride ions, so Chloride is Cl minus, Good. right? Ions, Cl minus. Perfect. Okay. Can do that. Okay, so let's set up our first conversion factor here. All right, so I know I want ions to cancel out, so I'm Good. putting ions of Cl minus in the denominator. All right. And I want to go to moles, but I don't know how to go ions to moles, so what should I convert ions to? All right, so we can go into something that maybe it takes into account the whole compound. Okay, so I guess like we did molecules and atoms in the last example, we could do ions and molecules. Yeah, it's not technically a molecule since it's ionic. Okay. But just for consistency here, we're gonna call it that. It's really okay. like a, a formula unit. Okay. So molecules of barium chloride, I, since it's ionic though, I better be sure of the formula, right? Yeah. So, Barium is in group two, it's plus two. I already know Cl is minus one. So that's gonna be BaCl2 for my molecule. Okay, so what are, is our unit conversion here? Well, again, kind of like the last problem, I think that in every one molecule of BaCl2, I see that there's two ions of chloride within that, right? That's correct, yeah, okay. okay. So one more conversion factor here. All right, so again, well, the ions cancel out here. I'm left with molecules, so now I want molecules of BaCl2 to cancel out. Okay, and, that's a familiar term. Yeah, yeah, so molecules to moles, so moles of BaCl2 will go on top. Good. 
Okay. Let's get our numbers in. All right, so for this we got, I know that for every one mole, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply everything by one on top, that's easy, but then I have to divide by two and divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Correct, so let's plug all that into our calculator. All right, so what I get is 0.194, three six figs again. And the ions canceled out, the molecules cancel out, I'm left with moles, and it should be moles of BACL2. That's good. You try number two. How many chlorine atoms are there contained in 3.8 moles of diatomic chlorine? Use dimensional analysis and make sure you pay attention to units and sig figs. Well, that's going to do it for today's up. I could really go for some Timbits right now. Bro, you read my mind. Let's go. Later, nerds. Today's episode is brought to you by... Him Tortons. Never fresh. Try a quart of last night's coffee and a pair of Him Bits for free 99. Free 99? There's never time for Him Tortons. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E, in the hall they call S-Wing You know we never wear a tie Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye Like, like this, that, and this, and a It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a It's like this You're going in low power mode Plug and chill to the next episode